Shabbat Shabbat Grand Rising. Dawn, what's good, sis? Jamil, hey, girl. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Rita, good morning. Just me. Shalom, Shalom. Why well, I keep opening this? This came yesterday in the mail. This is the actual printed copy of Romance of the Red Star. But it's still not the original printing. I don't think that they gave this to the Library of Congress like this. <laughs> but what I think happened is a printer picked it up and they reprinted the PDF. Like when I say they reprinted the PDF, they, they took the PDF, printed it out, put it on the copy machine or whatever printing press they got. Because you can see it's smaller pages. And you can see the page, the page from the copy machine on both sides, right? I'm just like, I thought it would be a better copy than this. I'm going to have to get a goddamn magnifying glass to read it. <laughs> but anyway, it's here. It, it, is, it, is, it is pretty small. For those of you that uh, um, have trouble reading small print, Go ahead and get your magnifying glass or something. It, it might help, seriously. You don't look like a detective reading through your book. All was, all is, all ever shall be. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, happy Friday. It's, it's First of all, it's Friday the 13th. How many of y'all superstitious? I mean, I'm not, but I always recognize it when it come up. It's it. There's no end to the superstitious people that I run into on this day. Um, I mean, I mean, if you are, whatever, you know, not that it really makes a big deal, but it, it really doesn't. If you are, I mean, you are for your own personal reasons and I, I guess that's okay. Right. Okay. So, but we're going to start it and it still doesn't have any, um, any table of contents. I mean, it's literally just like the PDF. Um, so to keep uh Jehovah cycle of creation. Of course it doesn't have any of that um excuse me, introduction of preface, list of plates, and none of that stuff. No editor's notes, none of that. It just starts with the book of Jehovah. Um what is this? OSP The Voice of Man, nope. Nope, that's not in here. Um, I might, as we go through, set my own little tabs in here. You know how, like, you get a Bible and you get tabs and you they, you now can actually get it with the little tabs that say Mark, Matthew, Luke, John. You can just pull them out. And if your Bible don't have tabs where it's an easy, quick reference... Um, I think I might do that with my little colorful stickies and write the names on it so it'll be like a, a quick reference. I'll probably do it as we get to each book. But anyway, y'all, it is Friday, January the 13th, 2023, day 314 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, another four-year consecutive day count, day 1,333. And we are going to start in this stone. Yeah, the only page numbers up here are the page numbers that are within the printed copy of the book. So this would be page, what, six, five, four. It'll be page four. Page four until. And then we're going to pick up in the field guide to the spirit realm. On page 237, we'll probably go ahead and finish that today. So when we come back Sunday, we can start digging into the reincarnation chapter that she referenced in her other book where she did a deep dive into it. And then when we're done with that chapter, we'll come up and we'll finish the last chapter here. All right, beautiful people. So, Father, we thank you that you, uh, I had, and I should have wrote it down as soon as I came down here. I thank you for the ability, I think I may have said this. I thank you for the ability to recognize patterns in life and be able to break cycles that aren't conducive to our learning and our growth. I didn't say that. I just added that. All right, beautiful people. How y'all doing this morning? Audrey, hey, girl. Hey, Hannah, shalom, shalom. And everybody else, Elsie, hanging out in the background. Ima, shalom, shalom. 
Ray, hi. And everybody else hanging out in the background. I said hey to the first few people that came in already. Love to the chat, Facebook, YouTube. Let's get started. Um, and uh, Big Blue, if you're following along, it's on page six. Page four. Four, Romance of the Red Star. All right. Um, I think I meant, you know what? I ain't gonna bring that up. We'll get to that when we get to that. All right, let's just start reading, y'all. Where we at? Seven minutes? Okay. And if you're following along, if y'all see something that's like extremely different like drop it in there if you follow one along in big blue or whatever so we can just glance at it real quick okay all was all is all ever shall be but all spake and motion was and is and ever shall be the all motion i'm sorry and being positive was he i'm sorry let me start over all was all is all ever shall be the all spake and motion was and is and ever shall be. And being positive was called he and him. The all motion was his speech. He said, I am and comprehend all things, the seen and the unseen, nor is there aught in all the universe, but what is part of him. He said, I am the soul of all. The seen and the unseen are of my person. By virtue of my presence, all things are. By virtue of my presence is life. By virtue of my presence are the living brought forth into life. I am the creator, the quickener, the destroyer. Of two apparent entities am I. Nevertheless, I am but one. These entities are the unseen, which is potent, and the seen, of which of itself is impotent of these two entities and likeness of myself made i all the living for as the life for as the life is the potent part so is the corporal part the impotent part chief over all that live on the earth i made man male and female and that man might distinguish me i commanded him to give me a name a man named me, not after anything visible in heaven or on the earth. By virtue of my presence, named he me after the sounds the wind uttereth. He said, Eoa, which is E-O-I-H, which is now pronounced Jehovah and is written thus. And then it has the, the symbol of a waspy. The circle with the cross and a flower. I mean, not the flower, the leaf in the middle. Yeah, Book of Jehovah, chapter one. Alisa, shalom, shalom. All right, so go to the next page, page five. The cycle of creation. Okay, cycle of creation. It doesn't have this in uh, big blue. It just gives like that heading, cycle of creation. Actually, it looks like it's two separate things. Jehovah is the beginning and the one, that one chapter, but cycle of creation looks to be an actual book in and of itself because it starts over with chapter one to whereas here in the lowest edition, it goes on to chapter two. Okay, Cycle of Creation, Chapter 1. In Cosmon, hold on. Created out of seen and unseen worlds. Man looked upward in prayer, desiring to know the manner. this be at oh it is um it's in the book of jehovah in big blue but it doesn't start to chapter three verse two 
Man looked upward in prayer, desiring to know the manner of all created things. Yeah, so chapter two looks to be added in. And um, if this is said, because somebody else said this is not um, the John Land place. So we'll call it the, the alleged John Land place, the uh, Romance of the Red Star. Okay, so it jumps and skips a whole chapter. And it goes to verse two in chapter three, which is on page seven in the lowest edition. And um, it has in Cosmon in here, but it doesn't say in Cosmon. Oh, where it says, by the light of Cosmon in verse 1. Okay. In Cosmon, man looked upward in prayer, desiring to know the manner of all created things, both on earth and in heaven. And Jehovah answered him, saying, By virtue of my presence created I the seen and unseen worlds. I created earth and placed it in the firmament, and by my presence brought man forth a living being. A corporal body gave I him that he might learn corporal things, and death I made that he might rise in the firmament and inherit my ethereal worlds. To S, I gave dominion over corpor. With S, I filled all the place in the firmament. But corpor, I formed into worlds and moons and suns. Beyond number made I them and caused them to move in places I allotted to them. As I divide it into two parts, Ethera and Atmosphera. These are the three kinds of worlds I created, but I gave different densities to Atmospherian worlds and different densities to Ethereal worlds. Jeremiah, turn it down a little bit, please. Thank you. Think not, O oh man, that I created space, a barren waste, and void of use. Even as man in the corporal form is adapted to the corporal earth, so is he in the spiritual form adapted to my ethereal worlds. Three great estates have I bestowed upon man, the corporal, the atmospherian, and the ethereal. The corporal worlds I created round with land and water, and I made them impenetrable, for I bring forth the living on their surface. The whirlwind made I as a sign to man of the manner of the creation of my corporal worlds. Jeremiah! Jeremiah, uh -huh. turn it down some, please. Thank you. The whirlwind made I as a sign to man of the manner of the creation of my corporal worlds. As thou beholdest the power of the whirlwind gathering up the dust of the earth and driving it together, know that even so do I bring together the Aji and Ga and Nebula in the firmament of heaven. By the power of the whirlwind, create I the corporal suns and moons and stars. By the power of rotation, swift driving forth in the extreme parts, condense I the atmospherian worlds that float in the firmament, and these become my corporal worlds. In the midst of the vortices, I made them, and by the power of the vortices, I turned them on their axis and carried them into the orbits I allotted to them. Wider than the orbits... I'm sorry, wider than to the moons of a planet have I created the vortices and they carry the moons also. Read that again. Wider to the moons of a planet have I created the vortices and they carry the moons also. About some of my corporal worlds have I given nebulous belts and rings that man might comprehend the rotation of their vortices. A great vortex created I for each sun, and within such vortices and subject to them made I the vortices of corporal worlds. The sun vortices I cause to rotate, and I give them power to carry the vortices of their corporal worlds. According to their density and position, our corporal worlds thus carried forth and around their suns and above the earth. And to the north and south, I placed polar lights that man might bear witness that light depended not on the sun, but the sun I placed in the midst of the great vortex so that every side was as a pole to the corporal worlds around it. And I made atmosphere as a condensing lens so that the rotation of each and every corporal world should manufacture its own light 
on the side polling to the sun by the rotation of its vortex. Oh, I'm sure that's probably in here. I was just thinking about, thinking about science. Okay, let me just keep reading. And I made the atmosphere, I'm sorry, and I made atmosphere as a condensing lens so that the rotation of each and every corporal world should manufacture its own light on the side polling to the sun by the rotation of its vortex. Atmospherian worlds I also created in the firmament and I gave them places and orbits and courses for themselves. But the atmospheric worlds I created shapeless and void of fixed form, for they are the elements of corporal worlds in process of condensation or dissolution, being intermediate in density betwixt my ethereal and my corporal worlds. Of three degrees of density created I them, Aji, Ga, and Nebula. But all of them are composed of the same substances being like the earth, but rarefied, nor is there on earth or in it one thing, even iron, lead, gold, water, oil, or stone, but the same things that are in my atmosphere and worlds. As I have given light to the earth, so, I, so have I given light to many. So have I given light to many of them. Yes. You know what would be awesome? What? If you just so happen to God. To get to a point when you when you in this, and you get to a point where you start to meet people like Stephen Greer, right? And then you start to get in, like, you know, informed about what's going on. So now you are this person that knows all this top secret information. That'll be pretty possibly, cool. Possibly but, put you in danger. But nobody would know that I knew that, cause I don't. I wouldn't be running my mouth about it. I'm gonna just say this. I like my. I life. wouldn't say anything about it. But I'm, I know I keep my, my lips sealed. I'm going to say this right here. If you do, mom, then tell me. Because all my life, I'm tired of this little born. Son, no. keep researching. You you hang around the, the right places and stuff. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, one, I can't find an actual vision that made the water power apart. All of that. Hold that thought, son. Hold that thought. I'm trying to stay on track. Oh, my God. I again. Okay. <laughs> Shayla, shalom, sis. Elijah, peace and blessings. Prince, shalom, shalom. Okay. Uh, look, what I was thinking about before, when I paused, um, when it was talking about um, the each world, each corporal world manufacturing its own light on the side polling to the sun, I was thinking about when I was uh, studying the moon, right? Um, but I also began to notice that there is a light here um, before the sun actually comes out. And I was wondering, I was like, well, the sun is not in, it's not in sight yet. It hasn't risen or rotated to this side where we see the light. Maybe I wasn't sure <clears throat> it was just light from far off because the sun was on its way back around or maybe we're rotating back around or whatever but i was wondering where does that light come from so i just i thought about that when i read this again where it says but the sun i placed in the midst of the great vortex so that every side was as a pole to the corporal worlds around it and i made atmosphere as a condensing lens so that the rotation of each and every corporal world including earth should manufacture its own light on the side polling to the sun by the rotation of its vortex. So I'm sure that has something to do with that, what I was looking into with the, the light that comes before the sun and the light that comes from the sun. And even the light that's there when the sun is completely covered, right? It's, it's, it's an interesting um, study to me. All right. As I have given light to the earth, so have I given light to many, hold on. Let me go back. Whole sentence. Of three degrees of density created I them, Aji, Ga, and Nebula, but all of them are composed of the same substances 
being like the earth, but rarefied, nor is there on earth or in it one thing, even iron, lead, gold, water, oil, or stone, but the same things are in my atmospherian worlds. As I have given light to the earth, so have I given light to many of them. And I also created atmosphere around all my corporal worlds. Together made I them. For the substance of my ethereal worlds created I eth, or the ether, eth. And I made the eth the most rarefied and subtle of all created things and gave it power and place, not only by itself, but also power to penetrate and exist within all things, even in the midst of corporal worlds. And to F gave I dominion over both atmosphere and corporal, kind of like the F on the inside of us. Our spirit is like a representation of that, of the ether inside of our corporal world of the flesh, right? It's, it's like we see, we see this creation in multiple levels us living inside of it, but also ourselves being made up of the very thing that we live inside of. So it's like we have it. He's given us like we are literally in a lab and he's given us a lab to test and practice with so we can see the bigger picture by studying ourselves. It's amazing to me. For the substance of my ethereal worlds created I F. And I made F the most rarefied and subtle of all created things and gave it power and place, not only by itself, but also power to penetrate and exist within all things, even in the midst of corporal worlds. And to F gave I dominion over both atmosphere and corporal. In the all highest places created I ethereal worlds, and I fashioned them of all shapes and sizes, and I made the ethereal worlds habitable, habitable, both within and without, with entrances and exits, and exits, and arches, angles, and curves, thousands of miles high and wide, and in colors of endless change and brilliancy, and overruled I them with perfect mechanism. To them, I gave motions and orbits and courses of their own. Independent made I them above all other worlds in potency and majesty. Neither created I one ethereal world like another in density, I'm sorry, in size or density or in component parts, but every one differing from another and with the glory matchless each in its own way. And were, a man, and were a man to travel a million years on one alone, he could not see half its beauty and glory. That's amazing. And the firmament of heaven have tens of thousands of millions of ethereal worlds. And I made the snowflake and caused it to fall, that man might behold the beauty and glory of its formation. Let the snowflakes stand before your eyes as microscopic patterns of the ethereal worlds in high heaven, and ye shall tint them as a rainbow, and people hold on, and ye shall tint them as a rainbow, and people them with countless millions of angels, spotless, pure, holy, and rich in the knowledge of me and my works, and full of the majesty of my love. That's beautiful. All right, so that's the end of that chapter. We'll be at 25 minutes. We'll read one more chapter. Man perceived. All right, so this will be in Big Blue, page 8, chapter 4, or chapter IV. And here is chapter 2. It is, right? Okay, chapter 2. And this will be page 6 in Romance of the Red Star, a biography of the earth. It came for y'all that came in late, right? It was reading from the PDF version. I was reading from the computer, but the actual printed book came, but it looks, it looks exactly the same as the PDF, literally like they just read they like they printed this out. They made the font smaller and they laid the, the PDF on the copy machine and printed it and bound it. So the print is small. Okay. Chapter two, 
Man perceived the general foundation of the world, and he prayed that his eyes might be opened for a sign in heaven. And Jehovah answered him, saying, The clouds in the air I bring into view suddenly by different currents of wind. Make I thus the unseen visible and tangible to man's senses. In like manner do I cause the Ethereum currents to bring forth Aji and Gia and Nebula prior to making corporal worlds. In all the universe have I made the unseen to rule over the seen. Let the formation of the clouds stand in the view of man on earth, that he may witness the manner of the unseen becoming seen. Let the formation of the clouds stand in the view of man on earth, that he may witness the manner of the unseen becoming seen. That's good. Let me just highlight that. that. That's good. Thinking about how we have clear skies and actually watching clouds formulate in a clear sky. Let the formation of the clouds stand in the view of man on earth that he may witness the manner of the unseen becoming seen. Man perceived and he prayed for a sign of duration and Jehovah answered him saying, Behold the tree which has sprung up out of the ground and fulfilled its time. It falls, decays, and returns to the earth. But the wind, which thou seest not, never ceases to blow. Even so is the comparative duration of all things. Think not, O man, that corporal things are annihilated because they disappear. For as a drop of water evaporates and riseth in the air as unseen vapor, so do all corporal things, even earth, Stones, gold, silver, and lead become as nothing in the firmament of heaven in course of time. Man that seeth, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Things that man seeth created I with a beginning and an end, and the unseen I made of endless duration. The corporal man made I belonging to the seen, but the spiritual man made I as one within the unseen and everlasting. Let me read that again. I'm reading carefully because the words are so small. I want to make sure I'm not skipping over some lines. Okay. Things that man seeth created I with a beginning and an end, but the unseen I made of endless duration. The corporal man made I belonging to the seen, but the spiritual man made I as one within the unseen and everlasting. As the corporal man beholdeth corporal things, so doth the spiritual man behold spiritual things. As corporal things are tangible to corporeans, so are as things tangible to the spirits of the dead. As is another word for the unseen realm. Bronze, yo. When I condensed the earth and it became firm and crusted over, there arose from the earth heat and moisture, but I limited the ascent of the substances going upward, and the boundary of the limit of moisture was as the clouds that float in the air, and the heat was of like ascent. Let this be a sign that even as there riseth up from the earth heat and moisture, so there are representatives of all things on earth which have evaporated, which have evaporated upward, and all such things rise to the level of density like unto themselves, every one to its own level, and they take their places in the strata of the vortex. These plateaus of spheres surround the whole earth. Some of them are 10 miles high, some a thousand, some a hundred thousand or more miles high. And all these spheres that rotate and travel with earth are the atmosphere in or lower heavens. As I cause water to rise upward as vapor and take a place in the air above, let it be a sign and a testimony. Hold on. Let it be a sign and testimony of the places in atmosphere whereon dwell the spirits of the lower heavens. As I made a limit to the ascent of the clouds, so made I a limit to the places of the different kinds of substances in atmosphere.
the more subtle and potent to the extreme and the more dense and impotent nearer to the earth. Right? They're saying the same thing. Like if you, if you die living a, a flesh eating life or you still eat meat, I'll be nice. Or if you die still eating meat, you're more dense and you're going to hover near the earth. As I made a limit to the ascent of the clouds, so made I a limit to the places of the different kinds of substances in atmosphere, the more subtle and potent to the extreme and the more dense and impotent nearer to the earth. Who was this just at? We was talking about the potent and the impotent. Some rotation. I gotta go back. Cause we just read it. Okay. In size and density, component parts, everything matchless glory. Motions, orbits, courses that are all independent. Mm, I was looking for something. And potency and majesty. The density. Component parts. I'm certain I'm looking over it. Um, Jeremiah, can you turn that TV down up there? Hmm, I'll come back. I'll come back to it. It, it was. It's just reiterating what it says right here about the potency and things uh, potent and um, more dense, potent and impo and impotent. Okay. As I made a limit to the ascent of the clouds, so made I a limit to the places of the different kinds of substances in the atmosphere, the more subtle and potent to the extreme. And the more dense and impotent, nearer to the earth. So what what I was looking for where was talking about the the flesh being impotent and the the spirit being more potent, right? So the more potent rises upward, and the more impotent it just it it, it can it can only rise so far, so it hovers near the earth. That's what I was looking for when it's talking about the corporal and the spirit. It's it's definitely <laughs> what we just in the, the lines of what we just read, okay. According to the condition of these different plateaus in atmosphere, whether they be near the earth or high above, so shall the spirit of man take its place in the lower heaven. According to his, according to his diet, oh, hold, let me start on. According to the condition of these different plateaus in atmosphere, whether they be near the earth or high above, so shall the spirit of man take its place in the lower heaven. According to his diet, desires, and behavior during his mortal life, so shall he dwell in spirit on the plateau to which he adapted himself. For I made the power of attraction manifested in all things before man's eyes that like should attract like. That's, I need another highlighter. It just, it literally just repeated that. <clears throat> I didn't realize it was about to repeat it again. In different words, but that, that's what I that's what I was alluding to. And I'll reread this one more time. This was good. So you have to be careful about your diets, right? Because you choose, like you literally, like in school when you study, how much effort you put into studying and doing your homework and stuff will determine how you're placed, right? You may pass on to the next grade, but you know, there are in, I guess once you get, I, I, I think they do it in middle school now too, but you can have, um, you can take just general classes. You can take intermediate classes and then you can take honors classes, but pre, but based on your previous effort will determine what you qualify for and whether you can actually 
get in the honors classes. First of all, can you comprehend what they're teaching in the honors classes? And will you be able to handle the workload, right? So based on your efforts, the same thing with our diets and all this stuff here, based on what we do, what we learn here, what we put into action, we'll determine, like we literally determine our place when we give our flesh back to the dirt, right? First time, shalom, shalom, communicator, shalom, love eternal family. Let's read one more time. As I cause water to rise upward as vapor and take its place in the air above, let it be a sign and a testimony of the places and atmosphere where dwell the spirits of the lower heaven. As I made a limit to the ascent of the clouds, so made I a limit to the places of the different kinds of substances in atmosphere the more subtle and potent to the extreme and the more dense and impotent nearer to the earth. According to the condition of these different plateaus and atmosphere, whether they be near the earth or high above, so shall the spirit of man take its place in the lower heaven. According to his diet, desires, and behavior during his mortal life, so shall he dwell in spirit on the plateau to which he hath adapted himself. For I made the power of attraction manifest in all things before man's eyes that like should attract like. All right, y'all. And this is where we're going to pause. We have 37 minutes. We're going to pause right here trying to stick within our, our hour. Oh. Page that was we read pages four to seven, and well, we're actually in the cycle of creation, but Big Blue calls it the Book of Jehovah. They lump the one chapter of the Book of Jehovah together with the next book, which is called the Cycle of Creation, which makes a lot of sense that it would be called the Cycle of Creation, right? But okay, it is what it is. We ain't going to major on the minor things. We're just going to even now search for truth and um, looking for the authentic John Lant plates. If this is not it, right, we're not going to lose sight of our perpetual growth, right? Like I said, we're not going to major on the little minor things, but we're going to keep going. We're going to read. We're going to extract all we can at this point, and we're just going to keep going. And if it comes that by the time we get to the end of this, we, we, can't, we still can't decipher what's what. Um, if it is in fact, truly the John Lance place with some of the other research and stuff that I'm still doing, looking into John Lance's life and, and contacting, um, some of his family members that are still alive, just to see if they have any, um, any insight on any of this, this, if the stories were passed down to somebody or somebody that knows cousin, grandchild or somebody, right? Cause they're alive. It's information on them out there. Um, just, just checking to see. Right, and if they know something, it would greatly help our research. Um, so but if not, it doesn't matter. I don't think it's time wasted, I think it's time well spent in searching for the truth and being able to stay on track and you know, just applying the truth that we learn to our lives and just keep on moving. All right, y'all. So, um Tabitha. She said, I love sweets. I hope I won't be hovering around a bakery. <laughs> I'm with you, sis. I'm with you. We, we, we got to get it together. We have to bring some, some balance into our lives with the sweets, right? All right, look. Okay, so we paused yesterday on page 237 down at the bottom. And feel God to the... Feel God to the spirit world. We're still in the uh, reincarnation chapter entitled The Reincarnation Hoax. Okay, let's start at the bottom. Matter of fact, let me reread this quote that we paused with yesterday. Quote, the spirit indicates its interest in possessing an individual through some affliction to get his or her attention. End quote. Vincent Crapazano case studies and spirit possession according to the Wukwabi cult. Both MPD or multiple personal disorder, both MPD and reincarnation are forms of spirit possession, right? Clearly, we, we know that to be the case now because in order to 
reincarnate, you got to take over somebody else's vehicle because you cannot be born again, right? Impossible. Can a man go into his mother's womb and be born again? Nope. Try it. Both NPD and reincarnation are forms of spirit possession, though both have been otherwise labeled. Take the case of 30-year-old Julius K., who developed a tumor on the left side of his brain. It was surgically removed. His grandfather had had the exact same type of tumor at the identical location. Given these circumstances, the reincarnationist <clears throat> might well cite the tumor as evidence of the grandfather's re-embodiment in his grandson. However, consider these facts. After the death of his grandfather, Julius, four years old, underwent a dramatic personality change that into adulthood involved fits of violent temper of which he was unaware. Checking for possession, Eugene Morey, a friend of the family, discovered the presence of a negative entity. I'll let Morey tell the rest of the story. Quote, Throughout his life, the young man had exhibited many of the personality characteristics of his grandfather, displaying the same unruly disposition. Furthermore, his grandfather did not believe in an afterlife and would be the perfect candidate for an earthbound spirit. Without further delay, I requested the presence of the grandfather's spirit. I then explained to him what had happened to his grandson. After the explanation, I lovingly performed the exorcism. Something must have happened as there has been a steady improvement in Julius's personality since my talk with his grandfather. End quote. Maury, 1988, page 75 through 76. Browsing among old ghost stories, the great PSI researcher Nandor Fodor found a 17th century chronicle of marks and blisters left on a girl by the apparition of a man who had, quote, led an evil life, end quote. Indeed, when his spirit form appeared, he revealed some of his crimes. We know, too, that some of our modern-day criminal offenders, Gacy, Sharcross, Liss, Masek, and so on, bear a palpable imprint of negative overshadowing and actual mark. Psychic blisters keep turning up in the stories of psychopathic killers under control of extreme violent spirit familiars. Red blisters erupting on Richard Masek's skin were, quote, an almost supernatural event, end quote. Morrison, 2004, page 28, quote, nerve blisters, end quote, afflicted Arthur Shawcross. John Liss, familicide, tended to break out in, quote, blotches, end quote, and big red welts. John Gacy, when young, quote, acquired a birthmark, end quote, that seemed to have disappeared from his mother's arm, quote, and reappeared on John's as though it were a kind of supernatural experience, end quote. Morrison, 2004, page 84. The record, in short, is full of paranormal markings, not the least of which fall to the demonic attack. The St. Louis boy, whose story was remodeled for the, for the classic film The Exorcist, was painfully slashed and scratched by, quote, something evil, something not of this world. The Lutheran minister suspected diabolical possession, end quote. T. Allen, page 40 and 45. And after page 45, there's an asterisk. And down at the bottom, it says, Precedents, especially among Catholics, were well known from old records of exorcism. Perhaps the most famous was the ordeal of Sister Janine, or Jeanne, Janine D. Agnes, the prior... Prioress, the prioress of Luden's Covenant, I'm sorry, convent, the prioress of Luden's convent, 
who exhibited paranormal scratches that erupted on her body. A bloody cross magically appeared on her forehead, fading only after three weeks. Go back up. That was the end of the little footnote. Men of the cloth were not unfamiliar with the religious phenomenon known as stigmata as it affected persons obsessed with the crucifixion, blood and wounds appearing in their palms. Certainly the stigmata of religious ecstatics are in the same general family as the welts and bruises erupting on all the hosts described in these pages. Having suffered from them herself in an occult excursion, having suffered them herself in her occult excursions, England's Dion Fortune came to believe that, quote, such marks must be of the same nature as the stigmata of saints and the curious physical marks and swellings sometimes seen in hysterics, end quote. Fortune, 1981, page 52. And at the bottom of it all is the mediumistic power still reviled even feared in this vaunted age of materialism. None of the above mentioned eruptions or manifestations, indeed, nothing, quote, supernatural could occur at all if human beings were not endowed with transient faculties. Yeah, I saw, um, Jamil said, so the spirit moved from mother to the son, exchanging birthmarks. First time said, no, nah, that's reincarnation. Look, so, um, for re for reincarnation, like here's something I guess you talk about it, but you, it's something that people just kind of ignore. It's like that big elephant in the room, right? When it comes to reincarnation, if the person is already alive, like the case of the son and his grandfather, right here, right? That he exercised, he talked to the grandfather over here. This example, first of all, the grandson was already alive, right? He was it says he was four years old. How can a grandfather be reincarnated into the grandson? The grandson already has a spirit himself inside his own body. So there should be, um, that, that right there should be like common sense kicking in. So this is not technically, clearly we, we no longer believe in reincarnation. We know it, it is definitely spirit possession. Another spirit coming to take over your body. But in order to, for that to be, it, and even from birth, even from birth, now that we understand, even from birth, it's still not a true case of reincarnation. It's still a case of spirit possession, spirit possessing another body, because we know all spirits that are born into this world with a body are new spirits, not spirits who have lived before. If they got the same mannerisms and acting like somebody, it's because they're probably being overshadowed by that spirit if they're no longer living, right? Or it's just a few of other different things you have to consider. But it's definitely not a person who lived before coming back, being born again. Impossible, right? Okay. Hold on. Certainly, we're on page 239. Certainly, the stigmata of religious ecstatics are in the same general family as the welts and bruises erupting on all the hosts described in these pages. Having suffered them herself in her occult excursions, England's Dion Fortune came to believe that, quote, such marks must be of the same nature as the stigmata of saints and the curious physical marks and swellings sometimes seen in hysterics, end quote. Fortune 1981, page 52. And at the bottom of it all, is the mediumistic power still so reviled, even feared, in this vaunted age of materialism? None of the above mentioned eruptions or manifestations, indeed, nothing, quote, supernatural, end quote, could occur at all if human beings were not endowed with transcendent faculties. And the best way to gain a footing in this hinterland of mind is to first acknowledge then study ASCs or alternate states of consciousness. Then study ASCs, altered states of consciousness. The altered state 
as we have seen, may involve autom automatisms such as xenoglossy, where the entranced or controlled person is seen and heard speaking a foreign language with which she is otherwise totally unfamiliar. I won't bore you with the many... I just thought about something. <laughs> the altered state, as we have seen, may involve automatisms such as xenoglossy, where the entranced or controlled person is seen and heard speaking a foreign language with which she is otherwise totally unfamiliar. Listen, I don't know why. When I read this, I thought about people tarrying for the Holy Ghost, speaking tongues. Listen. Listen. Hold on. I'm going to just keep going. The altered state, as we have seen, may involve automatisms such as xenoglossy, where the entranced or controlled person is seen and heard speaking a foreign language with which she is otherwise totally unfamiliar. I won't bore you with the many examples that have come out of psychoanalytic literature ghost chronicles church church listen i see i was i was that's that's where my mind was going because <laughs> y'all know before if y'all been here a couple years ago when i went through this whole phase about praying in tongues <laughs> i don't know why this just popped up again but I, I go back and restudy stuff as i grow in my understanding just making sure i'm staying on track because i don't want to open up myself to any kind of unruly spirit intrusion right so i'm testing everything all the time tiffany hey girl hey nini shalom shalom look i, li I literally when i read this i thought about a time i was in church and it was it was a revival service it was probably about it was probably about 10 o'clock that night and it was one of those things where it was people they they weren't using the term tarrying for the Holy Ghost, but it was people praying in tongues. And it was people down at the altar. All right, so I love you. Have a great day. Right, and it was... Can you keep the boys out of my You can lock your door and probably... Oh, they learned how to pick the little bedroom door lock. Well, take, hide your controllers or something. Tell Elijah to also... Elijah gone already, though, right? Well, go hide Elijah's controllers. Like, put them in his closet and one of his jacket pockets. And put your controllers in your closet Can and you one of your hoodies in your pockets, too. They'll never think to look there. Can you just say that said stay out of my life? Or you just want me to add your daddy on top of it to make them think your daddy said it? They're can See, <laughs> they comfortable around me and you. They ain't that comfortable around my pop. So you want me to threaten them with your daddy? It's not threatening it's but what if they go in there and they can't find them they're just gonna walk back out because they can't find a controller just take yeah. them josh is gonna call me and blow my phone out tell them no stay out of my room they can't play without the controllers just go hide the controllers i'm about to do what they <laughs> look hold on listen ma look listen this is this is crazy now because i listen because i still pray in tongues right because for a minute when i started looking into kundalini it scared the crap out of me i was like oh shoot is this kundalini is this the holy spirit <laughs> i did like a whole video i'm like y'all stop praying. i'm like stop praying in tongues you know but i did that for a few weeks but i'm like well shoot I when I pray in tongues, I ain't getting like this crazy overshadowing type thing happening to me. It actually increases my spiritual sight. Like, listen, 
I, I still believe it really comes down to the purity and intent of your own spirit, right? Because some of these things I see, it freaked me out, but I was like, man, I didn't get those results, right? Now, I'm not those people. I don't know what type of life they live, but me. Me, I know my intentions are pure. I'm not trying to like get spiritual gifts so I can I'm be this great such and such because I know how to do this. I ain't going to seek out spiritual gifts and stuff, but I'm really curious and interested in how this works. Like even prophecy, I would sit and I'm like, this is amazing. How do you do that? Like, are you like making this up? Is it like being, you hearing somebody say this and you just repeat it and it's, it just comes out of me. I'm like, what do you mean it comes out of you? <laughs> right? So it really intrigues me, you know? So this, I, I, I be eating up stuff like this because it helps me with my curiosity on how this actually happens. Like, are you a fraud or are you for real? Right? And so... That's why, I, that's why, like I said, I, I still believe it really comes down to the purity of your heart and your spirit when you come across some of these things. And even if you begin to operate in some of it, your results, the variables are different. And so you get different results than what other people who would, who actually live a life that's not as, let's just say, I ain't going to say they stone cold sinners, <laughs> you know, because every, nobody's perfect. Everybody make mistakes or whatever, but maybe their intentions are different for um what they want certain spiritual gifts for right so i don't i don't i don't know so but i did i'm like oh shoot i'm not and i didn't pray in tongues y'all for like two years but it was bothering me because like i said when i practiced it when i did it it would increase my spiritual sight spiritual wisdom would be down downloaded into me and i'm just like okay how can this be bad i'm not I'm not really understanding this. So low key, I started praying in tongues again, right? I'm like, okay, Father, you just got to help me. I don't want to be speaking no curses or open up myself to demons to come inhabit me. I was like, but there is, I'm not understanding this. What's the difference between Kundalini and being filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> right? Listen, and learning all the stuff that I learned in Owaspi about the origination of the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't term it as that today, right? But that's the terms I was using then. So I was like, you know, it, it, like I said, it really comes down to the purity of your spirit and the intents of your heart, which is going to give you the different results. You can see me and somebody else doing the same thing, but our results are going to be different, right? Now, if their lives are pure and holy and their intentions are pure, then it'll probably, and if we come together, it'll multiply the power that we seem to have and it'll like accelerate us because we're on the same frequency of the creator. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's literally like, working out a science project in lab taking different steps and the science teacher coming over like okay what you didn't do you didn't you didn't you didn't blew up all of this i had he had to come over there with a fire extinguisher all right and, and based on what type of fire what color your fire is he can tell you where you messed up at <laughs> right that's that's how that's how precise spirituality is when you actually begin to understand the principles behind it and how you grow so that's the part i'm interested in the education on how the spirit actually grows and can develop and become more pure and actually open your open you up to the higher like it intrigues the crap out of me <laughs> which is why i don't know i, I just i'm a i'm a deep researcher looking into these things and it's like a child when i find out that's like what oh my gosh we can do that <laughs> so but yeah this is when i read over this this whole this whole scene about praying in tongues came back to me and sometimes people would i would notice something different remember i told y'all about miss sophia the lady that come down there for prayer every sunday holding on to her wig shaking <laughs> shaking down the aisle right and she'd be praying in tongues and stuff right she'd be praying in tongues but like the output that we see radiating from her life it's like i don't know sis that's a strange fire coming from you that's strange fire i don't know and i don't, I don't want to be caught up in that circle with what you're doing right so but yeah it says the altered state as we have seen may involve automatism such as xenoglossy right xeno did i say that right xenoglossy 
where the entranced or controlled person is seen and heard speaking a foreign language with which she is otherwise totally unfamiliar. And that's what praying in tongues. <laughs> Look, yo, I'm telling you, that's what praying in tongues is, right? And most of the time when you get those languages downloaded to you, you haven't taken, you haven't taken a, a foreign language class. It just comes, it's like, it's like you can turn it on and turn it off at will at certain points, right? Um, hold on. My mama said, let me go back up. Oh. Hold on. Dang, hold on. I must have skipped over it. Hold on. Okay. She said, remember our friend that was in a car accident and when she awakened, she was speaking a foreign language? Listen, this stuff happens all the time too, Ma. There was, matter of fact, there's a few news clippings. I may have shared them before. Matter of fact, you can Google people in accidents or head traumas. They, and it was a black kid too. And that's what really intrigued me. A black kid, I forget what type of accident he was in, but got into an accident but after that, he was no longer speaking English. He was speaking like a couple different languages. He was speaking literally a couple different languages and nobody could understand them except for the people who spoke those languages. Like, yeah, he's saying this. I'm just like, how does that happen? Clearly, in the accident, something, um, oh, sweet. Um, something has happened where they clicked some button. I'm going to just say, for lack of better words, they didn't click some button in the brain, Right. And it was, it's almost kind of, it reminds me of like what Owasi be talking about, the flathead prophets, right? When children, they, they can force prophecy. It's definitely something with the, uh, the pineal gland or whatever. And they take those plates and from birth, um, and the creator allowed it to happen. He said, well, let them do it. He said, because at least they'll listen to their people with the prophecy that comes forward. Because they ain't, they ain't going to listen to you, right? The people that's in line with me, but they'll listen to their own people. So I'll allow this to be done so that they can hear the truth. And so from birth, they would literally create, they figured out how to create prophets by being able to press in on that pineal gland. So they would put plates from birth. They would choose whoever they're going to make a prophet, male or female baby, take them plates and put it and strap it to their head. And after time, it just began to mold their heads to where they was flat and it was called the flathead people, right? But they were super sharp in judgment and prophecy. And they could give you a prophecy like that because they act they figured out a way to activate the pineal gland, like the seat of the soul, the, the part that's inside of us that's in tune with the spiritual realm all the time. And they went to them to pull information. So that I'm sure that was I ain't gonna say injured in the accident but it was pressed it was activated in the accident which is why a lot of time when people have head traumas you know uh, with people who are uh prophetic i don't say all of them but it's a good deal of them like me when i was younger i had an accident i, I shared it with y'all why I, I hit my head right um me and my sister playing kickball my mama said quit jumping on that ball like that instead of playing kickball i was jumping kicking with both my feet and I remember that, but that was the, I can remember that was the source where all my migraines began. And that's been a constant source of frustration all through my life. Constant migraines hit the, the, this, these headaches and stuff. But when I went plant-based, the migraines and headaches went away. Like it's rare. Like it's, it's rare. Like matter of fact, that's why, um, I got disability from the military. That was something that that happened when I was younger, but because it was made worse because of the division I was working in, my original division was V4. I was in a in the air department, right? So I was in a division that fueled the planes. V4, they called me a grape. But when I was TAD, I had the opportunity to get out of that atmosphere, always working around a fuel that was constantly triggering my migraines and stuff and having to go to medical, taking the 800 grams of Motrin, um, I was able to stay TAD a whole lot longer because being in my division, it would, it would complicate things for me and the migraines would come back. So that's how I was in, t that's how I worked in security and learned all this stuff about security. Um, but yeah, uh, th it, this is, this is amazing how this happens, right? So, um, yeah, the, the, 
the people that get in accidents and they start speaking other languages. This this is absolutely amazing to me. Let's keep jumping. I'm trying to go back. Okay, yeah. Um Oh, my mom was just saying it happened quite a while. Yeah, um, it was something else I saw. First time it's about the deeper inner dimensions of self, your divine essence. Oh, Brian Jogi said, I had clear audio after my first hearing experience. It went away, though, because I let the preacher give me some bogus information. <laughs> some bogus information. Yeah, we'll be judged for what we know. So be careful of your knowledge because we have to apply truth. Apply the truth in your life. Just saying. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> I know you'll talk about super concentration. Look. Communicator said, Sister Pam, there are people who inherit even accents from different countries and cultures, i.e. Japanese girls, talks, and Scottish accents talks in Scottish accent overnight. Some things happen in the brain that experts can't explain. I, now I, it is amazing to me, right? They try and find all type of ways to explain it. And when they don't, they just call it a miracle or something. But all of these things can be explained. They just haven't studied the brain long enough. Where in the, the, all the research and understanding that we know, everything that we've been able to reproduce here has come from understanding the body in some type of way. So it can be explained. We just ain't got the right person. Or the right person probably knows how, and they've been probably trying to explain it, but they didn't probably shut them up because they're trying to figure out how to take credit for this knowledge so they can come out and be the big guru, the one who's able to explain all this. But I'm sure this can be explained, and, and people probably are explaining it, but they probably just keeping them silent. Probably just keeping them silent. Okay. We at we at our let me finish this little paragraph right here, but we'll pause. The altered state, as we have seen, may involve automatisms such as xenoglossy, where the entranced or controlled person is seen and heard speaking a foreign language with which she is otherwise totally unfamiliar. I won't bore you with the many examples that have come out of psychoanalytic literature, ghost chronicles, church histories, spirit circles, even hospital records where the anesthesia, anesthesia the person that's been given anesthesia, the anesthetized patient comes to speaking a language she doesn't know. Once again, the reincarnationist co-ops the phenomenon like Ian Stevenson, who collected many instances of xenoglossy and offered them as evidence of past lives, lived as a native speaker of that tongue. Stevenson, of course, totally disregarded the temporary fluency of psychic mediums channeling in Greek, Gaelic, Chippewa, Monomany, Raratunga, Polish, Latin, Serbian, and Dutch, all in the context of, quote, sittings, end quote, and communion with spirits. Stevenson's oversight is all the more glaring in light of the Catholic ritual Romanum, which lists xenoglossy among the top four criteria of spirit possession, right? Sheesh. Even the Roman Catholic Church say, listen, being able to do this, like, out of nowhere, that's fall on our list of spirit possession. <laughs> Hold on. Let me read. Let me, let me finish reading this down right here. I can't resist a single case in point. I love Susan B. Martinez. I can't resist a single case in point. It involves a youngster who, though quite normal in every other way, never spoke a single word until age three. His mother was Canadian, and so was the father, though he had been born in Hungary. 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 Anticipating the birth of the child, the father's mother, who spoke no English, came over from Hungary to help out. 
Yet seeing her son so Canadian, quote, Canadianized, end quote, she became obsessed with the fate of her grandson, actually developing, quote, a morbid fear that the same sort of thing would happen to her grandson, that he would know nothing of his forebears and lose all trace of his true homeland, end quote. She begged her son to give her enough time to teach the expected child the language and customs of the old country for the sake of peace. For the sake of peace, he granted her wish, but it never came to pass. For just after the baby was born, the old lady died. When the beautiful blue-eyed child turned out to be quite mute, doctors and specialists had no answer. Then one night, his parents, quote, found him standing up in his cot, staring fixedly at one corner of the room and talking excitedly without any difficulty except that the language was Hungarian, end quote. How many know that was grandma standing in the corner? <laughs> Fulfilling her wish that she wanted to teach her, uh, to teach her grandbaby the language of the old country. That was grandma standing in the corner. Listen, then one night his parents, quote, found him standing up in his cot, staring fixedly at one corner of the room and talking excitedly without any difficulty, except that the language was Hungarian, end quote. After that, the boy was silent again and remained so for another year, after which he began to speak English, but with a heavy Hungarian accent, end quote. Underwood, 1986, page 180 to 81. Well, if you want to call body, mind, invasion, an earthbound spirit, quote, reincarnation, end quote, you are free to do so. But at the risk of twisting the science of soul, spiritology begins and ends with an understanding of our incorporeal self, the spirit part that at death flows effortlessly from corporal to s from physical embodiment to the angel world. For those who cannot envision any conceivable existence without a body, reincarnation is the perfect solution. It maintains the materialist fallacy, all the while pretending to be a, quote, spiritual, end quote, philosophy. Indeed, it has in many ways eclipsed and perverted modern spiritualism. As Steve Blake has so aptly observed, quote, in reincarnation, human consciousness is dependent on the physical body. It has become a surrogate for survival, end quote. Blake says he wrote his book as a challenge to the theory of reincarnation. And Blake says he wrote his book as a challenge to the theory of reincarnation, which most unfortunately has, quote, effectively neutralized the principal finding of psycho research. Namely, that we all survive bodily death and continue to exist as discarnate beings, end quote. Blake 2014, page 194. And that's, oh, you know what? Let's just finish this. I forgot. Like, let's, this is literally one paragraph left. Making us dependent on a physical body to continue our progress and work out our karma is incompatible with the most fundamental definition of spiritualism. It is, in James Webster's words, like riding two horses, spiritualism and materialism. Graham McKenzie, who interviewed Webster not too long ago, advised his readers, quote, for a most excellent page turner on how the illusion of reincarnation plays itself out, see James' book, quote, The Case Against Reincarnation, explaining his position on McKenzie's website, James Avers, quote, there is not a single case of scientifically proven reincarnation. Every suggested case has a rational explanation, usually part of a mediumistic event. This is not my first and probably not my last attempt to convey the phoniness of a doctrine that has us hopping from one body to another 
throwing dust in our eyes and blinding us to the true meaning of immortality, the eternal progression through the cosmos that is every man's birthright and inheritance. Sooner or later, we will all discover the truth of the matter. This is so good. And so that was the end. Of, that was the ending of the reincarnation hoax uh, chapter in Feel God to the Spirit World. But there is also in here, 242, and some little um, cartoon snippets, right? I'm going to take a picture of this and post it today if you don't have the book. But I'm um, going to read it to you. Okay, so this first one is two women sitting at the desk, right? This one right here. And it says, in the, the banner over top, it says, Reincarnation Job Center. We never close. Then it has the arrow pointing down. And on the desk, it's like a bunch of little different magazines about um, actually historical big wigs, A through B. A through B. Okay, so what it is, I guess this is a Rolodex of the different people who you can go down to and reincarnate in. And some of them, uh, have reserved at the top so you can't take this one and the one she's holding in her hand which looks like a viking says above his head available right so she was like hmm, this might be a good one you want to be a viking in your next life okay the clerk we are completely overbooked on napoleon Anne of cleese and joan of art how does attila the hun grab you right attila the hun okay so apparently this is attila the hun yeah it says until at the bottom of the one she's holding where it says available the little packet she said how does Attila the Hun sound right okay so that was the first one this next one is a thief what is this M old antiques and this is a police officer look like he walking up on somebody stealing and it has Steve and it says don't you arrest me these belong to me in my last incarnation Police officer just blowing his whistles. Like, you know what, buddy? Let's go. <laughs> if you can see that. You'll probably be able to see it better when I take the picture. And you can kind of zoom in. Okay, the one on the bottom right is two older ladies. It looks like they're having a tea party. One of the ladies is pouring tea and she got a little cat sitting on her lap. The cat got one eye closed and one eye open looking over at the other lady. Like, lady, don't believe her. <laughs> Listen. Client, I sure feel, I feel sure I was Florence Nightingale in a past life. The medium. Oh, but Florence communicates regularly through our home circle. Okay, so the woman pouring the tea and holding the cat is clearly the medium, which is probably why, the, okay, now, okay, so the look that the cat got on its face is probably like, is she believing it? The cat knows that this woman full of crap. Okay. So the last one. Apparently somebody has died and gone to the pearly gates of heaven, right? This is St. Peter's arrival. Showed up at St. Peter's gate. New arrival. Please take me to meet my dear wife at last. St. Peter. Sorry, you are just too late. She has reincarnated as your grandson. Can you see that? Probably a little blurry on Facebook. Let me see. Oh no. This one right here. Okay. All right, y'all. And what this is, this is figure 10.4 cartoons from James Whit James Webster's book, The Case Against Reincarnation, created and drawn by his brother Tony Sheldon. And also I noticed there's a lot more of these that she uses in this uh, reincarnation chapter here that we're going to get into Sunday when we come back, which start, look, I opened it up right to the page. Look, <laughs> who, look, you can't make this type of stuff up. Listen, okay, so this actually starts and that's not where it uh, started either because I got a tab here on the page where it started. Look. It's a reincarnate reincarnation right there. I opened up the book, opened it right to here. The St. Peter's pearly gates that we just read over. 
the cat is made a medium for many cultures. Yeah, I believe that. So chapter seven, <clears throat> if you don't have this, I'm not saying you got to go get it, right? This is another one of Susan B. Martinez books, Delusions in Science and Spirituality, The Fall of the Standard Model and the Rise of Knowledge from Unseen Worlds. I'm not saying you have to get it, but I think it's a friggin' awesome resource while we're learning, <clears throat> while we're learning spiritual things while we're breaking out of spiritual dogmas and delusions and stuff she brings a lot of good level-headed insight to the spiritual realm with real live instances of everything testing it right she tests a lot of things so this is chapter seven and it begins on page 284 in um delusions and science and spirituality and it's entitled Chapter 7, Reincarnation, Body Snatching for Karma. Put the page number, page 280. What'd I say? 280, 284, Chapter 7. Okay, so we're going to read this. This is a, this is a big chapter. Um... It goes from page 284 to page 320. So we'll be a few days reading this. And once we're done here, excuse me, hopefully we'll be really clear. And if you're still kind of, you know, not so sure, look into some of these references that she gives. Like this one that she just gave the case for, um, sorry, um, the case against reincarnation by James Webster. And there's a couple other couple other ones she gave in here as well but if you got this just scroll back through um if i get time i'll just i'll i'll just list them for you matter of fact it's in the bibliography as well so you can go to the to the bibliography and i'll i'll pull them out and i share them so if y'all want to get them you can um and you know just 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 increase your spiritual understanding and awareness of things going on around us so you cannot be fooled right we, we, we tired of the shenanigans and the spiritual games, right? The strong delusion. We've had enough of the strong delusions, right? All right, beautiful people. So that is it for today. Father, we thank you for the ability to break the bondages that we have. Not only that we have bound ourselves in but spiritual bondages other people have bound us in without us even being aware because we were spiritually unaware and ignorant but thank you for enlightenment and being able to take the key and unlock ourselves and walk out in truth and light and follow you all right beautiful people thank y'all for hanging out today Everybody else that came in is hanging out in the background. Shalom, shalom. Y'all have a wonderful day. Uh, we won't be here tomorrow because this moon cycle, the Sabbaths fall on Saturdays, right? So by default, we celebrate the Sabbath with most of the world. They just kind of like keep it on Saturdays or Friday nights to Saturday nights, whatever, right? However you learn it, as long as you're learning and growing and adjusting as you learn new information and getting rid of information that no longer serves you based on the truth you now know, that's that 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 right there is a sign that you are truly growing and you're pliable and you're teachable if you're not afraid to let go of the lies, right? You know what? It is what it is. I was caught up in it long enough, even at the the... Even at the threat of losing friends or communities of people who no longer believe like you believe because they're going to outcast you because now you believe a little bit different. Even at the risk of losing all of that, choose to walk in the truth and light of the creator, right? Because sooner or later, they're going to come looking for the light that helped you break free, right? And may you be shining even more brighter when they come searching for that light, right? May you be a beacon for them to easily find, right? So they also can break free of the bondages that have held them captive. I love y'all. I will see y'all back here Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m. And the weekends, we're going to still stick with our, we're going to take up some extra time just because it's the weekend. But if you got to work on the weekend, go to work. 
don't be violating work principles and stuff, especially if you work for the man or the woman. If you don't work for yourself and you can't create your own schedule, go be on time. We record it. Just come back and watch us later. All right? I love y'all. Gloria, shalom, shalom, sis. I'll see y'all back here Sunday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.